So we're going to get started here. Thank you so much, uh, Robert, for sharing that with the people and sharing that with me. I'm always amazed. It's uh, been a heck of a journey, personally. I've been at this now about 12 years in the Inland Empire. I actually travel all across the United States. Uh, I'm a law enforcement trainer by trade. And uh, I do run a nonprofit, as he said. I would highly recommend that if you would follow us on Facebook at IE for Inland Empire Million Kids. And also, uh, you might want to go on to millionkids.org and sign up for something that we call Insider Alerts. About three times a week, I come on and I make a video. It's usually about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. It's about the latest cases that are happening, all about new technologies that are coming on, uh, things that I think that a parent and a, and a grandparent might really need to know to keep their child safe from predators. So you just simply either go to insideralerts.org or go into meandkids.org and sign up for Insider Alerts. So a couple of things I want to share with you, as Robert mentioned, I am uh, the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. I take the time to share that with you for two reasons. One is we're very fortunate in the Inland Empire to have human trafficking task forces that focus on this, both in Riverside and San Bernardino County. And I work with both of them. I just spent yesterday with uh, the Fontana Police Department. Amazing men and women. Our, our uh, area is so fortunate to have quality law enforcement. These are men and women who go out in the middle of the night to rescue a child that, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or a teenager <laughs> that has decided to go out and meet up with somebody in the middle of the night. And so I'm very grateful to have them and have them be part of our, uh, our lives. So the other reason I share that with you is I want you to know that when I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing real cases. I'm not just some activist that throws out big numbers. Everything I do is based on real cases. And I also report to the Department of Justice and they need a little disclaimer to let you know they're not responsible for my attitude. So there you go. But that brings me to two more things. Because I report to the Department of Justice, I cannot distribute for you the slides that you're about to see. However, you are more than happy to take your little camera, your cell phone, and take pictures of them if you want. And I just remembered one more thing before I get started is that I forgot to promote my radio show. I have a, a radio show at three o'clock on Saturday afternoons at AM 590, The Answer. And, uh, it, and so you're in the Inland Empire, you can hear it at AM 590 at three o'clock every Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, we're going to have a real treat, by the way. I spent all afternoon with the Fontana Police Department, and those folks are my heroes. They are amazing. You see, there's something in our business called Internet Crimes Against Children. And what they do are handle the crimes when a young person sends a naked photo and the blackmail begins. And sometimes it goes in the dark web and literally a million people can start to contact your child, wanting money, wanting more photos, wanting to blackmail you. And there is a specialized crime unit led by Chief Green over at the Fontana Police Department that works with the FBI and Homeland Security, and that is their specialty. And they have a dog named Goose, okay? So I, you're going to hear all about it if you come and listen to the radio show at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. So we're going to get deep in. Now, I'm going to warn you that some of this stuff gets heavy because we're going to talk about social media exploitation. So if you have young people in your house that are below the age of 13, I want you to think about whether or not they should stay. If they have a cell phone, they probably should stay. One of the challenges we're having is that we give cell phones to young people who understand technology, but they don't understand adult sex, and it turns very bad in a hurry. So I just want to give you that caution. One of the things that I've learned in my 12, 13 years of working with this is that human trafficking and sex extortion are crimes of psychology. You know, we all have this idea that either it happens in another country or if it happens here, they come along and kidnap you off the street. That can happen, but normally that is not the way it happens. 
it's a unique crime because it gets the victim to be involved. And we call that the grooming process where they're actually involved. They think they're in a relationship or they hope to be in a relationship. And that is how they end up being groomed. What do pred predators look for if they're looking for a victim? When I share this with kids, I say low hanging fruit, okay? They are looking for available and vulnerable. They do not care what you look like. You do not have to be pretty, okay? These people will sell a 500 pound purple elephant. They don't care what you look like. What they're looking for is easy prey. Somebody willing to take chances on the internet. They're playing a numbers game is what's happening. They're looking for that person that will, that will literally be easy to recruit. When I talk to your kids in school, which I did when we had school, I would share with them, you know, don't be easy. You know, don't be low hanging fruit, whatever you do. I want you so tough, you look at these guys and tell them to flip off or some other less Christian term. I don't care what language they use. What, them to, what I want them to know is you're too good for this. You simply look at them and say, I am not falling for this. You're going to get somebody easier than me. I know who I am. I know what I stand for. And that's how we teach our kids to not take chances on the internet. I share with kids, self-esteem is a decision you make yourself. And once you make that decision, nobody can take that away from you. If you, every time you do what's right instead of what's easy, you get character. And that is how you stand against it. This is what we call low hanging fruit. In almost all of our cases where they've met online, it's a dating site, it's a chat room, it's a video game chat room, or it's a, a hookup site. Tinder is our number one dating site for young people to meet up and get hooked up with a guy. We call this boyfriend pimping or Romeo pimping. It looks like a relationship. In fact, you mom and dad, you sense it right off the bat. This guy shows up, he's 23, she's 14. You're saying, I don't like this guy. He's too old for you. I don't like the way he talks to you. And you're saying you're grounded, clean up your room. And he's saying, hey, baby, you're hot. And what is happening is that he is beginning to groom her. What I need parents to appreciate is you are not uh, arguing with him, okay? And you're not arguing with her. You are arguing with the fantasy he is creating in her. And when a parent gets in a tug of war with a fantasy, they're gonna lose. So what you will learn as we go through this tonight is how to deal with that kind of thing. The first one is being on those websites. Uh, my LOL, that is uh, one that we now have three cases here in the Inland Empire. Scout is very common. Meet me is very common. The other thing that I know about our young people is that they don't date so much anymore. They hook up, okay? It's a lack of commitment is what I think they like about it. But here are some of the sites that they hook up on that we have in our cases here in the Inland Empire, especially Tag. Tag has a, um, a new set out called Pets and I'm on it. Oh my gosh, it's awful. I, I, I watch this stuff so that I can learn about it. But I can tell you half the guys on there look like pimps to me. These hookup sites are dangerous. It makes you available and vulnerable. So what happens? A pedophile will go into particular categories on apps like TikTok. And yeah, we're going to talk about TikTok where it's over or Instagram and or Snapchat. And they're looking for particular kinds of postings that are on there. Something that says I'm available and vulnerable. Here's a list of them right here. Uh, just to let you know, and they will come in as a solution to this kind of situation. You know, my dad lost his job. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, that can be really, really tough, you know, but, but we can be friends. I've got a good job. My folks are fighting again. Hey, you want to come over and sit down and tell me about it? And so they go on and they'll watch for words like that. They pick particular hashtags. Uh, like on Instagram, like uh, uh, cam girls or hot cam girls or itty bitty bikini. And they start to look for particular categories that they can go into. So again, they're looking for available and vulnerable. 
The first way that a young person can tell if they're talking to a pedophile or a predator is they will move you from one app to the other almost instantly. If they meet you on TikTok, hey, meet me over on Instagram, you're really hot, shoot me more of those videos, I'll get you a deal. And the reason they're moving you from one app to the other is they want to make sure that you're not a cop. And number two, they're kind of testing the waters to see if you're willing to follow them. So that is available and vulnerable. One other group that's available and vulnerable that I didn't make a slide for, but I wanna talk about a minute. It just occurred to me. And that is if you have a life event in your life when the teenager is about 13, 14, 15, even late 12, 13, 14, 15, the things that happen in our life during that time can greatly impact us. And they can be normal things. Maybe grandma died, the COVID thing and the lack of being in school is enough to trigger that kind of thing. Or maybe you moved or maybe dad or mom lost their job. Those are traumatic experiences in what we call the life event years. So if you have a teenager with that in there, get a strategy to offset it. You might even want to help them in by getting into counseling. But the reason I say that, especially if you've moved, is when things go bad at that age, a teenager will turn to the internet and start then bonding with people they don't know because they're looking to be included. They're looking to, for that sense of belonging. And so I would add that to the mix. So as we said, it's a crime of psychology. Now, let me share with you a story to kind of help you understand what I'm talking about. This is a true story. It's a case I was involved in. I had written a book, which I'll tell you about later, called Seduce the Grooming of America's Teenagers. And this man down in, uh, this father down in uh, Paris, New Evo area had read my book. He had a 12 year old daughter. She's a cute thing, real smart, but she is playing on some apps that he realizes are really not all that good for a 12 year old. They happen to be kick and a miggle, but quite frankly, those are older apps. Anyway, he realized this from the book. So he sat her down one day and said, honey, I really don't want you to use these two apps. I don't think you're quite ready for them yet. Well, instead, he was right, quite frankly. Instead of cooperating, what happened is in the middle of the night, he heard her window shut. He said he panicked. He's something of a cowboy. I like this guy, okay? He said, I ran down the hall, and sure enough, she is gone. He said, I didn't even dress. I just jumped in my car. I backed out. I looked down the street and there is my 12 year old daughter getting in the car with a total stranger at three o'clock in the morning. He said, I went absolutely bonkers. He said, I, I went down there, I pulled this guy out and I just knocked him out unconscious. Now this girl thinks she's getting in a car that with a guy that she's been talking to on the internet that she believes is 16 from San Diego. So I ask you folks, does he look 16 to you? This guy is 27 and he is a registered sex offender. 10 seconds later and her life and the life of her whole family. And I really wanna bring that home. This is a family crime. This is not just the victim in this case. Her whole family's life would have been changed. But what I want you to see is this guy did not drive up to their house and break into that house and go in and kidnap her, no. He got her to send him a text saying, hey, my dad's putting the heat on me. Come get me. He got her to crawl out a bedroom window and he got her to walk three blocks down the street in the dark when she'd normally be terrified and get in the car with a man she had never met. That is why we say it's a crime of psychology. Now, I learned early on, I get excited about this, I guess you can tell, but I know if it's a crime of psychology, we can educate against it. And that's why I've now, I just realized that bio is a little old for it now. I've trained almost a half a million people. And a lot of them are teenagers. And this is what I learned about kids. They don't want to be violated. And most kids want to be leaders. And they don't want anything bad to happen to them. And they sure don't want it to be bad to happen to their younger brothers and sisters. 
And it is up to us as parents, as leaders, to give them that intellectual equipment, that understanding to overcome that veil of denial about technology and equip them to live in a world without borders. In a world where they're going to talk to millions of people they'll probably never meet, and some of them mean harm to them. So how do we teach them to discern a relationship and protect themselves if they're going to live in a world without borders? Here is one of Riverside County's biggest cases, and it is my personal case. And it's a hard case to listen to, but it is also a powerful case to learn how important it is to talk to your kids. This man is named Elio Berto Jacoba. Now this case a little bit older now because it took place on Facebook and no teenager is on Facebook anymore. Just the old codgers are doing that, including me. Anyway, but I want you to understand what happened. He got the photograph. He's married with kids, by the way, anybody's neighbor. And he got the photograph of a girl he called Marlissa Garcia. Now, I don't know if he knew her or not, but he made a fake Facebook page using her photo. And in the Facebook page, Marlissa is a prostitute. She is going to Vegas. She has a brand new car. She goes to dinner. She gets all new clothes. She gets her nails done. That's a big hint, by the way. They, they like to get their nails done. And so all of this is living the life. And you too can live it. All you have to do is contact Marlissa, and she will show you how to do it. Well, interesting enough, more than 200 teenagers in Riverside and San Bernardino County contacted Marlissa without realizing they're really talking to Mr. Jacoba. And he's saying to them, well, and by chat, you know, hey, it's only sex. Why are you giving it away? You can make some money. I'll set you up with my best customer. He's great and bad. He tips well, and we'll see if this is for you. The sad story is more than a hundred of our teenagers showed up and many of them had sex with him. And when he was through, he set them down and said, let's look at the videotape we just made together. You are now one. They were absolutely freaked out. Not one of those kids ever knew that they were being filmed. And 17 of them were blackmailed with that film and forced into prostitution. So I want you to understand that some of our cases, the kids are living at home while this is taking place. Their behavior will change if that happens. They all of a sudden are very short of sleep. They start to run away. They get in arguments. They can't eat right. They can't sleep right. They may start cutting. They may become highly emotional. Now, there is good news with this story because one of those days I was training in a high school like I would normally be doing right now if, there were, if it weren't for COVID. And at the end, I would do six sessions a day. And at the end of the, the second session, two beautiful young girls came up. They were about 14 or 15. I'll never forget them. They had long kinky hair. They were laughing. They thought the whole thing was a joke. And they handed me their phone. And they said, Miss Singleton, do you think this is something because we're just playing a game with this girl? Do you know that 60% of girls recruited into forced sex of forced prostitution are recruited by another girl? We're just playing a game with this girl. Here's what I know. Had I not been there that day, it all would have been different. But more important, had those girls not listened and came forward and showed me their phone, it really would have been different. Thousands of more kids would have been violated. And I'm so proud of those teenage girls because it tells me that if you share this with them, they get it. And they don't want to be violated and they want to be leaders. And it's up to us to prepare them to do that. Human trafficking, meaning especially in the state of California, is uh, commercial sex under the age of 18 is the fastest growing crime in America. And California is the number one state. We usually have twice as many cases as any other. And most of our victims are US citizens. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of cases that are a little hard to hear, but I need you to hear them. This is the Dog Pound Gang out of Fresno. 
a lot of our cases involve gang members where they use their young guys to go on those dating sites and recruit girls. And the girls fall in love because they're really gorgeous hunks, okay? And they're off and running thinking they've really got a relationship. And that's exactly how this worked. They used their gang guys who were around 16 to 23 years old, and they would go on the dating sites and they would recruit kids especially foster kids in many cases, or kids who had run away, maybe some pregnant kids, uh, but anybody that they could recruit on a dating site. And once they got them in there, it would look like a boyfriend, girlfriend, but it would turn on them. And suddenly these kids had a quota and they're, they, if you don't make $800 a night, you don't eat and you don't get to, to sleep. And so two big signs to watch for, they're very sleepy and they're, they're food deprived, they're very hungry. Another sign to watch for is they'll often carry multiple phones because those phones are tied to the sex sites that set up their dates especially if it's one of those prepaid phones and one of those prepaid phones with an out of the area area code and one you didn't pay for. Those are all big signs, very hungry, very sleepy and extra phones. In this case, they used a very upscale hotel. You know, we have a tendency to think of this kind of thing as the no tell motel at the sleazy part of town. Well, it can be depending on the gang, but it can also be an upscale hotels. This gang was making $30,000 a week in Fresno, selling young teenagers out for commercial sex. They also had them doing other crimes, and that's a hint. You know, they'll have them do uh, shoplifting or stealing a car or using fraudulent credit cards. When I deal with our probation departments, uh, we talk about if you have a girl that's picked up for shoplifting, rerun that tape to see if there isn't a guy that slides away as, she, as she, we're taking her away because they will engage them in other crimes. This thing was so big that when the police arrested him, and this is Chief Dyer, he's now retired, but amazing job. But they had a Bentley, a Range Rover, a party bus, and a boat, and $50,000 in cash. So how much money were the girls who were earning the money getting to keep? And I share that with teenagers. You will earn the money. You don't get to keep the money. What is even crazier is this particular gang was operating a sex trafficking case uh, ring out of prison. And that is why a place like Fontana Police Department has a dog named Goose, because they can sniff out thumb drives for, for child pornography cases, and they can sniff out cell phones uh, in these jails where they have contraband cell phones. And so that is uh, your law enforcement at work. Now, this is a heartbreaking case, and I, I'll try to lighten up a little bit after this, but I really want you to hear this case because I can tell you that the parents of this victim wanted you to hear this case. I went to dinner with them. This is a beautiful 16-year-old girl, very smart kid, and many of these young people are very smart. But she went online and picked, had a fantasy relationship with one of these people. She lived in Madeira up by Fresno. But what you'll see is oftentimes Fresno girls are sold down here in Ontario and, and uh, Moreno Valley or Colton and, um, and uh, Corona. And then our girls are sold up there. They move them around so they're hard to find. And this girl hooked up with one of these people. The parents told me all about it said that they did everything they knew to do to try to get this girl convinced not to do this, not to go online with these dating sites. But one day she snuck out and she borrowed a phone and she disappeared. Now that is a gut-wrenching place for parents. I run million kids, missing kids. I work with parents who are missing their kids. And that is the hardest place in the whole world to not know where your child is. Are they in Vegas or Los Angeles or Tijuana? Well, she was brought down here about 300 miles south of Madeira to Moreno Valley. And she was sold into the gangs of Moreno Valley and they ended up trading her up to Ventura, which then traded her to Bakersfield and Fresno and back to Madeira. So this beautiful young lady's life changed just like that because she went on the wrong dating site and took that chance to sneak out and meet up with him. They have rescued her. Our team was involved in it at the task force and also the Ventura and Fresno task force. 
The parents have her. They are taking her back east to a place of safety. She has five gangs trying to keep her from cooperating. But the reason I take the time to do this is I went to dinner with her parents and they told me, Anything you can do to tell our story without giving our name, we would appreciate it. To let them know that a beautiful child's life can change just like that. And it did. These kids are worth fighting for. That is the work of me and kids. I show this picture right here to our teenagers and I want them to see it. This is all the same girl. She was picked up eight times over the course of one year. And every time she was brought in, they photographed her. I can guarantee you that this beautiful young girl in the top right, excuse me, top left, could never have visualized what she would look like in the bottom right in only one year. You'll only live about seven years once you get in this life. You have HIV, STDs, hepatitis, drug-related diseases, and very difficult abortions. So how does all this happen? Well, as I said, I've written a book called Seduce, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. By the way, we'll have a movie coming out this summer and it probably will be called Seduced after that book. It is being done by Stephen Peake, the guy who did Seal Team Sex, and it will contain a 45 minute documentary for schools. So I'm very excited. But it's all about how predators use social media to access, groom, recruit, and exploit our kids and talk to them about things that are the holy grail for a parent, you know? I mean, morality, spirituality, sexuality, all these things that you normally would think that you would talk about, total strangers can talk to them. One of the challenges here is the internet feels like a world with no consequences. By the way, it's no different for adults. We're all like that. Why do you think adult dating sites work? You know, and why do you think pimps work on adult dating sites? You get that fantasy relation going and every one of us wants exactly what we want. And your kid is no different, okay? except that we use real life emotions in a world that we can't evaluate. So our kids, when I talk to them, they will tell you that sex on the internet is not sex. And I'll say, well, then why did you just pay 50 bucks for it to have virtual sex with a virtual prostitute to get your real money back after you kill her in Grand Theft Auto V? And that's a very old game now, but it's been going on a long time. I get the killing isn't killing, but our kids are using real life relationships like they might have with a young person down the street to evaluate a relationship online with someone that you really can't see. So if you're 14 years old and you get one of these on Snapchat or Instagram, baby, that's hot, okay? Except you're getting this guy right here and he's ugly. I don't have any problem saying that. This guy is ugly. I cannot imagine a 14-year-old girl who says, hey, baby, you're hot. I can't. But he has 300 victims. How does this guy get 300 victims? He does it by looking like that to our kids. And this is where it ends up. You see, we all see what we want to see. And we block out what we don't want to hear about. And at this point, I want to congratulate you for being willing to come on and give me your valuable time and listen to this hard stuff. Because what we're doing tonight is acknowledging the other side of the equation. And I appreciate you doing that. So I'm going to share a story with you that I share with kids in school. And I'd like you to share it with your kids if they're not with you. So this is a true story. It happened to me. I had spoke at a big organization over in LA on a Friday afternoon. And that mother that was head of the organization, very brilliant lady, very powerful lady. She went home that night and she had an 18 year old daughter. And this is May 1st and she's going to graduate June 15th from high school. She has a full paid scholarship to go to college. This girl is brilliant, okay? She doesn't have a dad, but she is really on top of things. She has a job, she has a car. I mean, she's really good. So when mom went home, she's like, blah, 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 blah. I heard all this stuff today. And she thought her daughter would be excited. But instead her daughter began to cry and she went to her bedroom and she came back with a passport and an airline ticket to Ireland. 
Now, this girl showed her the ticket and this, this airline ticket is for a flight out Sunday morning. This is Friday night. And the daughter told her, mom, I wasn't going to tell you till I got there because I didn't want you to stop me. Now, I mean, the mom called me. I, I'll never forget this either. I get interesting calls. Anyway, the mom called me and she goes, what do I do? She said, I knew he was, she was talking to a guy through Xbox in Ireland, but you know, I mean, she's a straight A student with a job. I'm, I'm thinking this is a pen pal, you know, and the girl herself did not realize she had been uh, groomed, even though she's absolutely brilliant. This guy had convinced her to sell, uh, to quit her job and to raise $2,000 and to buy an airline ticket. And she got a passport. She's 18. She didn't tell. And she bought a $2,000 airline ticket to Ireland and she wasn't going to tell. So mom said, what do I do? And I said, here's what I want you to do. You sit down with her and you tell him, you know, you say, if you love this guy, I'm going to love him. So let's do this. Let's cash him your airline ticket and I'll give you some money and we'll buy him an airline ticket and fly him over here. Now tell me everything you know about it. Why did I do that? This girl has had nine months of a fantasy. If that mother had looked at her and said, over my dead body, you are not going to Ireland. If she can raise two grand and get a passport, she knows how to get on a plane. And it would have ended badly. When a parent gets in a tug of war with a fantasy, they lose. So mom said, what now? And I said, don't be a drill sergeant. Sit down with her and say, hey, tell me all about this guy. If he's going to be my son in law, what's he like? You know, is he like tall and, and uh, thin or kind of husky? Is he a good looking blonde, maybe Irish guy or uh, one of those big Italian hunks? Does he drive an SUV or a pickup truck or a sports car or one of those silly motorcycles? Okay. Nikes or Skechers, Skechers uh, soccer, baseball, basketball vegetarian or meat eater. My point is, when you date somebody in person for nine months, you know everything about them. They probably live in a mom's basement and they got 16 dogs and cats and they might be wearing an ankle bracelet because they're on parole, okay? But you can see and you can evaluate. Nine months online, you cannot. So help her begin to come to terms with the fact she's a smart girl, she starts to realize really quickly what she doesn't know about them. And that is how it works out. Now, when I share this with kids, we talk about it a little bit differently because I want our kids to think about this. How do we prepare our kids to have a relationship online with someone they have never met? We don't tell them what they should be looking for and watch out for what they should be, the, the warning signals that this might not be what they're dreaming it to be. And I share this with kids. How much money did he raise? You know, nothing. You know, how much money did she raise? Two grand. What's he giving up? Nothing. What's she giving up? Everything. The rest of her life. If you're in a relationship where they do all the question asking and you're doing all the answering, you got to question that. If you're in something where they're doing all the demanding and you're doing all the giving, that's not a relationship. That's a negotiation. And it's important for us as adults to come alongside and realize they have the same tender hearts and they have all the hopes and dreams and wants and that fantasy the same as we have. We have to give them brick and mortar to be able to evaluate that with. Well, I've written another book and this is what the movie's all about. I believe we live at the most important time in all of history. And I cannot emphasize that enough. I believe where we're at today is more important than the industrial revolution. And if there's ever a time that we need strong parenting who are informed and engaged, it is right now. So thank you for joining me. Because I believe how this generation of young people learns to use technology with respect and responsibility will set the stage for all future generations. You see, this is the first generation of young people that will be able to reach the entire world but the entire world can reach them. 
And so how do we pair it in a world like that? This year, we'll see the year that because of 5G, the entire world is brought together. And so it is the greatest challenge of all time for parenting and also to be a teenager or a young person on technology. You know, think about what technology does for us. We're really excited. I'm doing this by Zoom, right? I mean, normally I'm on a stage in front of all of you, but no, here we are looking eye to eye. I'm five feet from my kitchen, okay? So it's changing the way we do business and the way we communicate. It changes how we experience matters. I was laughing at myself yesterday. I was coming home from Fontana when I got the news about Tiger Woods and his a car accident and it's starting to live stream while I'm going down the street of my car. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you're know, you gonna be the next rollover if you start watching a live stream. But I'm experiencing it like it really happened. The same thing happens with protests. Think about what happens. They throw that bomb, but they don't, you know, in the old days, they just run away. No, they are live streaming all the time. It's running away so that you experience it like it's really happening happening to you. The same kind of thing takes place on terrorism. You know, it, you see a bombing in a, in a cafe down in uh, Atlanta, and you say, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go to that sidebar cafe tonight. You know, that's the only thing left, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, or you see a shooting up in Las Vegas, and you say, maybe I shouldn't go to the Dodgers game. And what happens is because it's real, because we're experiencing it live, it disrupts our sense of predictability. And we feel like it's happened to us. And that's true of your teenager too. With social distancing and online learning, our kids will, this generation, will now spend more time online than any generation ever before them. But we have a little bit of a problem here. Our kids are technology wizards, okay? They really are. When you think about it, they get these apps and these games and they try them out and they do, they don't, you know, they're off they go and we're running along behind them going, you be careful on that thing now because half of the time we don't know what to look for or what they're really doing. One of the other challenges is we are doing this younger and younger and it is a bit scary to somebody like me. I love that little kid on the left, by the way. He's, so, he's like me. How does that work? You know? <laughs> I love it. But think about this. These kids cannot tell if they're online on the World Wide Web or just a little kid's video game. And the other thing that happens there is that we do this long before they understand adult sex. They get the technology, but they don't understand what a pedophile is about. One of the reasons why it's a home without walls is 87% of our kids sleep with their phone. Think about the power of that and their ability to make solid decisions at three in the morning when they're in their most vulnerable place. A world without borders for our kids is a world without borders for pimps, for predators, for pedophiles, for gangs, for cartels, and organized crime. And we cannot pretend that does not happen. One of the biggest challenges, these technologies come with no warning. I believe we put more warning on a bottle of penicillin than we put on an app like TikTok or Lite or Byte or any of the new ones. And that is the challenge is our kids understand technology. When I analyze so many of these cases where kids get hurt, they're on five, six, seven different apps. Uh, and yet they don't know what a pedophile is. Think about when you put a seven-year-old on a phone, they get all those apps. I see the cases involving five different apps, but they just want to please seven-year-olds want to be liked and they want everybody to like them. And they don't want to get the man on the other end in trouble. And when he wants a picture of the private parts, it's just like bathroom humor and they all giggle because they understand how to work the device, but everybody is afraid to explain to them about adult sex. Sometimes parents will say to me, how old should my child be before I give them the phone? And I say, well, have you had the sex talk? And they'll say, well, they're a little young. 
If they are too young for a sex talk, they are too young for a phone because they are going to meet people online that's going to explain sex to them not like you would do, I guarantee you. So without our training you, and thank you for joining us, I appreciate it, and without training our teenagers, we're playing roulette. We believe that about 8% of America's kids are being violated across the nation. That's a number from the Center for Disease Control. So for parents, one of the things I wanna caution you about, our kids are good, okay? And they know how to hide apps. So there are apps called Instagram, Insta, uh, Finsta and Rinsta. Finsta is, uh, the Rinsta is the real one with the R. The Finsta is the Instagram that you don't see, okay? If you ever see a child on TikTok thought, T-H-O-T, that's a pornographic version of TikTok. But the most common way that kids will get away with what they're going to get away with are what we call ghost apps. And here's the list of them right here. The most common one is calculator. If you see a calculator on your, on your kid's phone, don't think they're adding and subtracting. Simply extract the phone and say to them, until I get the password for this calculator app, you are not getting your phone back. I need to see what other apps you have on there. And that brings us to another subject. Don't ever be afraid to share with your child's phone. You're the one that's paying for it. I usually suggest, and, I, and we were talking about this at Fontana PD yesterday, and they agree with me, uh, thank God. But anyway, uh, they, you know, it's my phone, I'm paying for it, okay? But I believe you're gonna be a leader and I'm gonna trust you. So I'm gonna loan you my phone. But every now and then, because it's my phone, I'm going to check it. And if I ever see you're not a leader, well, I'll bar it back to you ready. But it's important for you to understand that you have this tremendous opportunity in life to be a leader, to not take chances and be a leader for your younger brothers and sisters. There is an app. I don't get paid for this in any way, but I interviewed this guy on my radio show recently, and I didn't want to include it so that you can look at it. It's only for Instagram right now, although they're working on one for TikTok, but I really, really liked it. It's not just a tracker app where they mirror, you get one, they get one, you get everything they say back and forth on Instagram, but it actually has an evaluation on it, a red, yellow, and green, because a lot of times, just like those sayings that I showed you early on in the slide, a lot of times kids will say things that are like absolutely red flags to a pedophile that they won't realize are dangerous. And you both will be alerted that this is a red or this is a yellow. And you can sit down with them and go, why would that be a yellow? You know, what, what would a pedophile, what would that trigger with a pedophile? And you can have that conversation. And folks, that's really what it is about. We, we're past the stage of running around wagging our finger, okay? Although I believe in parameters. I don't have any problem with that at all. But it is a conversation and a partnership of doing this together. So I want to ask you one of the tough questions and one of the questions I deal with all the time. If a person is, a, if a young person, if a minor is exploited on the internet, who is responsible? And I want you to think about that because there's this big movement right now to make all the app companies responsible, which is why the excuse that they're using for censorship, they're saying, if I'm responsible for what's on my website, then I'm not going to just let everybody on it. I'm going to decide who I want on it and not. And a lot of people got kicked off. But it's an interesting question. And let me give you a case while you think about that question. Because in this case, what is happening is that, that this gentleman right here is married and he has children of his own. He has 40 victims. Most of them are eight-year-old girls. Now, this one victim that I want to share with you, she's in Lubbock, Texas. He's in Ohio. So this is what I mean by a world without borders. These two people would never have met had she not been on social media, okay? She's eight years old. Mom gave her an iPod, and I'm not picking on mom as opposed to mom and dad, but she happened to be the parent in charge at this point. So what happened is in one month, this guy had 40 victims, mostly eight, but he hooked up with this girl from Lubbock, Texas. So think about this. She's eight years old. She's borrowing her mom's device, okay? And one month, she sent him 2,400 messages. 
that's 80 a day, 80, 80 a day, okay? 1,700 images, that's 20 a day. That's my math, 20, that's 50 a day, okay? You know what it's like, I take a picture, I download it, upload it, I try to get it out, right? 67 videos, do you know what it takes to transmit a video? And she did that on average twice a day, she is eight years old. And on top of it, she's live streaming, just like you and I are only on Uvu. So when I saw this story, the mother happened to come on TV that I saw the, the video. And she said, that monster came into my daughter's bedroom and stole his innocence. Well, boy, I don't disagree with that. This is happening before the kids ever go through puberty. It will change who they are for the rest of their life. It will change their images of relationships and sex and the whole thing. This, this particular thing got very, very raunchy, but I thought I'd save you the details. But she is blaming the guy for coming in the bedroom. And I say, how did he get the key to the bedroom? Is it the app companies? I mean, she obviously was using, I don't remember, she's using five different apps. She's eight, okay? Mom, when she downloaded that app on that thing, agreed. No one under the age of 12 would use it. So, but we're holding the app company responsible. Now, I agree that, that the mother has other things to do and like that, but this, is, this girl has an excessive amount of time unsupervised. And so I look at it and it doesn't really matter if we say who's at fault and point the finger. A girl's life has changed forever. But the point of the whole thing is, is any time that we are putting a young person who does not have adult reasoning, who does not understand adult sex online in a world where there are pedophiles, then somebody is gonna get hurt. Whenever you take a hormonal teenager with a little, you know, uh, hyperactivity and you put them on any of the four big ones, and there's now four, they're on there with almost a billion and a half users. And we are counting on the belief that they are going to have the adult reasoning to rein in all of those hormonal emotions and make adult decisions. So one of the things I want to share with you is about a year and a half ago, Snapchat came out with Snapcash. And I thought, monetize a selfie. What kind of selfie is my kid selling? It isn't the picture of the dog or cat, okay? Well, you start to Google it and you find out that many of our teenagers are selling nudes on Snapcash to buy a new pair of Nikes. And that has become quite common. So now I want to talk about TikTok because I know that most of you have it. Now, one of the things I want to say are that apps are not good or bad, okay? Apps can be really, really good. I mean, there are many good uses for technology, many. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be alive at this time. I always say I'm on the high end of this generation, but I get to play too. I'm going to take a minute before I go into TikToks and just give you a little analogy I've been thinking about. You know, this kind of reminds me a hundred years ago when the world got cars. I can just imagine when they saw that first car, it was exciting as it could be, you know, but it only went 10 miles an hour and it only held one person. And pretty soon it's going 25 miles an hour and it holds two people. And you're starting to realize that your kid really likes this car and is thinking they might grow up and drive this car. And pretty soon they're going 40 and 60 and 80 miles an hour and 300 miles in a tank of gas. And it holds 10 people or eight people or six people. And we go, whoa, enough. And that's when we developed, uh, you know, driver's ed. And it's a fascinating thing because the car is not bad. There's nothing wrong with cars, okay? I mean, you can take a car off to church or you can take it off to a university and get a degree, or you can take it to a strip club and get yourself in trouble. So it is not the apps that are bad, but I want you to understand how these apps are different than all other apps because we have just laid the groundwork for all future generations and how technology is going to go. For some of you that are older, like myself, I remember Facebook and God forbid MySpace, okay? And we would say, our kid has 45 followers. Who are those people? And you, you know, you know, 
unfriend those people and block those people and we had some level of control but then came kick and instant messaging and our kids are getting messages from strangers and and replying back to strangers and we got instagram with the hashtags and the categories and and all of the above and now we have mass audience live streaming nothing will ever be the same from here on out we're baseline of how technology is going to advance and i teach all kinds of classes on this subject over at usc for what it's worth but anyway think about this with TikTok, what it is and it's not just TikTok; it's a buy like lasso all of those but mass audience live streaming you can be on TikTok and and have your profile private and only talk to people you choose. If your kid's telling you that, check the phone and make sure they are. Most kids will say, oh, I only talk to people I know on it, but their profile is public. The idea of TikTok is you make a 15 second video and you want it to go viral. I mean, nobody, hardly anybody any texts anymore. They all live stream, they FaceTime. God forbid they should email somebody. They are a visual, active kind of interacting kind of thing. And so they make a 15 second video. If their profile's on, it's going to go out to everybody. Many people freeze fame their face so that they can you know, manipulate their face and create all this animation with their face, except TikTok is a Chinese owned company. It's called Bike Dance. It's out of Singapore. But, you know, that's no different than those that are by Facebook or Instagram or the others. Many of them have facial recognition. It doesn't matter whether it's Chinese or U.S. They're storing the facial recognition and they have the profile. And on top of it, you um send out a video or a photo they have gps on them and so if you make that video in your bedroom they can tell where you live unless you disable the gps but more important it's an app that goes out to millions of people by category and then they can simply text back and reach you so it's two-way communication and we're just beginning so that's why i want to share with our kids on how to live with a world without borders the top TikTok apps, uh, you know, eight out of 10 of them are US kids. And the top one had 28 million likes and uh, the 10th the one had 23 million. And so it's an interesting thing, the way that it works. So I was sharing this with a parent one day when they said to me, I was at a rotary. She said, my daughter is doing so good on that. She's got a million likes. And I said, wow, that's, that's impressive. How old is she? Well, she's 11. So mom, let's think about this a minute. Your 11 year old daughter wants to be Katy Perry, Beyonce, pick a name, we don't care. She wants to be famous. And so she makes a really great video and she gets a great following. But if you have a million of something, what percentage of them are bad guys? I guarantee you at least 1%. And 1% of a million likes is 10,000 pedophiles that can tell where your child lives and send a text back. And that's exactly, remember how I said they meet you on one and transfer you to the other? Oh, baby, you're really good. I can, I can make you famous. Send me more of those videos. Meet me over on Instagram. Get me those videos and I'll make you famous. And that is how it happens. For many of our kids, I believe their first sexual experience will be a virtual sexual experience. And that's very, very important because we are putting our kids online before they go through puberty, before they know what healthy relationship is all about. This is happening if it's a shame-based experience where it goes wrong, where they start to get blackmailed, where they get rejected, it will change how they perceive themselves. And they are, they are doing that right at that most important moment in their life when they're starting to look around and say, who am I and who likes me? And it is a life-changing experience. Why do I share this with you? I want you to know about sextortion. Sextortion is blackmail with a photo, and it is the fastest growing crime, I believe, around the world. And the reason that it is happening is because of pedophile rings. That's why my visit to Fontana Police Department was so important yesterday. Center for Disease Control, and this is before COVID, said that 18,000 kids a day are sending a naked photo online. 
And now I believe that with COVID, that number, we already know from the reports of the, of the cases I'm taking at National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, it's up over 30%. And I believe in my case, it's up over 60%. And the victims are younger and younger. The University of Florida said that 9,000 kids that send that naked photo are being blackmailed. And the University of Toledo, Ohio said that 58% of, of people who send those photos and get blackmailed will go out and meet up with their pedophile to negotiate back that photo before they will tell a parent. So I'm gonna get real heavy with you as if I haven't already, but it's gonna notch down a bit. I want you to hear me loud and clear though. This is the loneliest place in the world for a young person the loneliest place. They panic. You know, I see case after case after case. I just did an insider alert of Patricia Alatori, 13 years old. She snuck out in the middle of the night trying to get it, her photo back, and they found her naked body strangled and burned. And uh, these kids are unable to visualize that it can happen to them, and they're panicked. So I want to talk to you, especially parents, about what to do with here. First, I want you to understand the, the pressure they're under so that you can see the need for you to be the adult in the room if and when this should ever happen to you and your child. What is happening are pedophiles all over the world are meeting up on the internet in the clear web. And there's a thing called the dark web and they exchange addresses. You have to have a specific address and a specific equipment to get in the dark web. They meet in the clear web, they exchange addresses, they go on the dark web and they form large scale pedophile rings. We had one called Welcome to Video that had over a million uh, participants paid to subscribe. In this case, there were actually nine of them. We now know there were three more. They didn't know each other. I know they look like brothers, but they didn't know each other. Okay. Look, they lived all over the United States and they would form a sextortion ring to trick kids, thousands and thousands of kids into sending that naked photo. They even gave themselves names. To them, it was just a, a game to ruin kids' life and have that power and control. So I, this is the part that gets heavy, but I really want to caution you parents. The first thing we don't wanna do is walk in. If you see your child struggling, and by the way, more guys send naked photos and get blackmailed than girls. And actual being forced into prostitution, it's about 83 to 17, 83% girls. 17% guys. In sextortion, it's a lot more guys, and especially in video game chat rooms. They get in there, they're sharing uh, pornography in a video game. They bonded with the guy in the chat room because they're both together competing against the other guy. They're talking smack. And before I know it, they've been tricked into sending out that photo. If you see your child's behavior change, take note. Do not walk up them and go, do you have a naked photo on the internet? That will just push them farther down. I've seen some horrific cases of kids who have carried this for two, three, four years of motel. I've seen cases where they commit suicide. They will change their behavior. They may start cutting. They may start uh, not able to sleep or bohemia, uh, anorexia. They may start missing school, which is why we train people like uh, uh, we did with Robert McCoy and the school resource officers. You know, they, they may start running away from home. They may not be able to sleep. All of those are signs that are really, really concerning. The way you handle this, I don't care if this kid is six feet tall, okay? And it's, it's better if you're a guy, if you're talking to guys, but if not, it can be a, a girl, depending on the relationship, it can be a mom. Sit down with them when you're very quiet and calm. I guarantee you when this starts off, the blood will rush to the top of your head, but keep calm. You're the adult. Put your arms around them and say, is it possible? You might say, you know, I, I'm seeing you deal with something really, really deep here. Is it possible you have a naked photo on the internet? And then just wait, okay? If they can't come forward and you think they, that they really do, you can say, you know, I want you to know I'm here with you. You are not alone. It'll be the toughest things ever happened to either one of us. 
but we are together and I will help you walk through it. And that's what I share also with school resource officers. When they come to you, do not look at them and go, what the heck were you thinking? Now, this is very serious. The first thing you do is take a screenshot of everything you can. I recommend you don't delete it and don't reply to them. Go to your police department. At Fontana, they have internet crimes against children, okay? And, and your local police department works with Fontana Police Department. Take that information and go with them. And let your child know how proud you are that they are willing to take the tough road and that they've learned and that they will never do this again. Now, here's the problem with this whole thing, folks. When this hall goes bad, the reason they won't tell is that they look around and it isn't like some pedophile came into their bedroom and violated them. And you can say, get that man out of my life. He caused me harm. No, actually, they look around and there's nobody there. This is a whole chapter in the book, Societal Shift. I call it phantom relationship. There's nobody there and prism of shame. And they don't know how to experience this is because especially if they're 11, 12, 13 years old and they're new in puberty, and now it has started out absolutely disastrous and it will form their opinion of them themselves. I am a firm believer that sex is the only bodily function connected to the soul and it will hurt in bad ways. So be there for them. Let them know how proud you are of them. Build them up. Give them the strength that, yes, they made a decision that didn't turn out right, but they can make a new decision. Now, if there's any teenagers listening to this with your family, let me share something. Never, ever put a naked photo on the internet. And even if you're just sending it to your boyfriend or girlfriend, there, there's hacking, they can be intercepted. And yes, they can get Snapchat. And, you, and if you get out there, anytime a naked photo goes on the internet, think about where they go. You know, they can be intercepted up to a million people easily. And so the minute that photo is out there, you're in a blackmail prison, you give up your freedom. And the only way out of that blackmail prison is go and tell someone. Until you tell someone, they hold all the power. They are counting on you not to tell. If you are talking to someone who says, don't tell, I would tell everybody I know, okay? The way you get out of that blackmail prison is to tell. And the way this gets resolved is for a parent or a school resource officer or a teacher or a counselor or a pastor or a, a you know, pediatrician, anybody that can listen should listen. I'm closing this out. I know this is heavy, but this is Patricia Alatori, and she was absolutely beautiful. I know if she was here, she would tell everyone she knows, don't do what I did. It can happen to you. She actually took off a bunch of clothes and put them in her bed so she could sneak out at night. I know of about 10 cases here locally where people, had, kids have snuck out in the middle of night. In a couple of cases, they actually were on the airline before they were intercepted. And this young lady was last seen getting in a pickup truck with this man right here. And they found her body and it had been burned and strangled and violated. She got in this pickup truck and the last she was seen alive was asking for help. I guarantee you this beautiful young lady never would have believed it could happen to her and she would never do it again. So I've given you a lot of heavy stuff. What I'm gonna ask you to do is let it just slide off of you, okay? Don't let it infuriate you. Don't get all excited and all that. Put it away. It's the kind of thing that you, I've given you a lot of information, you know, go for a walk, take the, give the dog a bath, you know, <laughs> go to happy hour, I don't care what you do, go for a walk, look at the moonlight, give your kids a hug, whatever, but let it run off of you. You have the knowledge now, it's the kind of thing that'll come back to you one day and you go, oh, that's what that woman on that TV was talking about, okay? But there's almost nowhere to hide because we're just getting started. But the technology we have three to five years from now will make ourselves have a headache, okay? But we must start today to prepare this generation to lead this. This is me at the end of the day as I do research and all this stuff. I mean, I got lucky, I got hair. But we can't pretend this isn't happening. It is happening. 
you know, technology has so much possibility. You know, the the it literally the poorest child in the whole world can get a college education for free. You know, our kids will invent cures for cancer we don't even know about. And many of our kids will have careers we don't know. But there is another side of that, and we have to acknowledge that. I'll tell you how this works. Kids don't want to be violated. They want to be influencers. They want to be leaders. That's old talk for influencer, okay? So they are needing us to equip them, to empower them. We must lower that veil of denial. Get involved with your young person's technology. If your son or daughter is playing a video game, get yourself an avatar, okay? Hey, son, what am I going to name this? Talk about digital morality. You know, is that a cop that we're killing? I don't kill cops, okay? Not even online. I don't do it. Is that a prostitute in this game? Because you have a mother and a daughter, you know? And who are we talking to? And, and begin to analyze how much pornography is in there? A lot in these video games. So challenge them, but get involved with them. Take them out, have family time, you know, go for hikes, go for walks, go to the beach, talk about these things. You know what I'd love to challenge you to do? It'll drive you nuts. Take a night and take all your phones and put them in a tin box and lock it up and walk it to your car and lock it in the trunk and then sit there and look at each other all night. <laughs> It'll be the longest night of your life. But it is important for kids to understand the power of technology for both good and bad. Get them involved in community activity and sports and things that can happen that will get them offline. And then I hope my movie is out this summer. I want to share all across the nation how the internet is made. Where do naked photos go when you hit send? You know, have you ever thought about that? Nobody ever promised you privacy, you know? It, private, you're a US citizen, okay? That's a privacy concept. This is called the World Wide Web. Nobody ever said the World Wide Web was private. So share with your kids how the internet's made and where those photos go. I encourage you, of course, I'd like to sell my books to support my organization, but regardless of all that, I'd like you to get educated. My books can be ordered at me and kids, but there are plenty of books out there. But and educate yourself and share it with your youth groups at your, at your uh, place of faith, share it with your organization, share it with your corporation. Talk to your family about this when it's all over. Finally, what I would encourage you is give your child a lot of grace. This generation is gonna make more mistakes than any generation before them. They are going to have more information provided to them, but less ability to discern the truth. They need you regardless of what you say. So I would share with you, if you know anybody that is being trafficked, this is how you go about reporting it. Or if there's a naked photo, or if they're being blackmailed or a child's being exploited, this is the national hotline. It goes all the way back out to all your local police departments and they will act on it. And you can do that anonymously. And finally, this is how you can reach me. I really would appreciate it if you followed us on Facebook at IE Me and Kids. And also, if you would sign up for those insider alerts, just go to meandkids.org, get insider alerts. I'll tell you about the latest cases, the latest apps, and like that. Finally, this has been Tough Talk. So I hope that you'll take tonight, put your arms around your kid, let them know that you believe in them. I believe the key to stopping sexual exploitation are four words. I believe in you. It's what pimps are selling girls and it's what we all want to hear. Look at your kid and let them know that you believe in them. Put your arms around your spouse and your loved ones and let them know how proud you are of them. This is the most exciting and terrifying time in life. But if we're smart, if we educate ourselves, and the fact that you're on this video shows that you care, we can come out of this thing a winner and our kids will be leaders. Thank you very much.